Today we're going to learn about the natural base E. In around 1680, the mathematician Jacob Bernoulli was trying to determine how wealth would grow if interest was compounded more often instead of on an annual basis. While doing this, he discovered a special irrational number E. The mathematician Leonard Euler proved decades later that E was an irrational number and could be represented as an infinite sum of inverse factorials. Many people think he called the number E after his own name, but the most likely speculation is that he referred to it as E for exponent. Just like pi represents a very special irrational number, 3.14159 and so on, E represents a very special irrational number. Use a graphing utility to graph f of n is equal to 1 plus 1 over n all to the power of n. This is a simplified version of our compound interest formula, where the principal, the interest rate, and the number of years t are all equal to 1. So we can isolate what's specifically happening when we change n, the number of times per year the interest is compounded. Then we can calculate f of 1000. F of 1000 is 2.7169239 and so on. F of 10,000 is 2.7181459 and so on. And F of 100,000 is 2.7182682 and so on. So Bernoulli's conclusion was that as n approaches infinity, as we compound the interest more and more frequently, f of n is approaching a special irrational multiplier of e, 2.718281828459, and so on. Euler found another way to represent e. Use a calculator to evaluate portions of the infinite series. In unit 8, we'll talk more about this series notation. But what's happening is that I'm adding up an infinite amount of fractions. So when I find s sub 5, that means what is the sum of the first five of those fractions? The first fraction is 1 over 0 factorial. The second is 1 over 1 factorial, and it continues in this pattern. If you remember from geometry, an exclamation point is a factorial. When you take a number's factorial, you're multiplying it by every consecutive integer below it. So 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 7 factorial would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Based on real life application of counting principles, 0 factorial is not 0, it is 1. Use a calculator to add these 5 fractions, but I'm also going to show you the intermediate simplification, which is 2.7083333. To find the sum of the first 6 fractions, I would add the first 5 fractions to the 6th fraction which is 2.716666 repeating. And the same for s sub 7. We could take the sum of the first 6 and add the next one. And you get 2.7180555 repeating. As you add more and more fractions, you will get closer and closer to the number e. e is called the natural number, and just like pi, it is a very special, repeatedly used, irrational number that has its own specific letter to represent it. For number 1, Properties of exponents apply to natural bases too, so simplify the following. Remember, this is e, the natural number. This is not a variable. Because we are multiplying the same base of e, we add the exponents. To reduce this quotient, 16 divided by 4 is 4, e to the 5 divide e to the 4 means we subtract those exponents and we get 4e. A product to a power means we apply this power to everything inside the product. 3 squared is 9, and when we have a power to a power, we multiply. And fully simplified, we'd write with a positive exponent, so 9 over e to the 8x. For natural base exponential functions, y equals a times e to the rx. For exponential growth, a and r both need to be greater than 0. For exponential decay, a needs to be greater than 0 and r needs to be less than 0. Remember, we get decay from that exponent being negative because when you make the x negative, you have a reflection in the y-axis. Your parent functions for e to the x and e to the negative x have the same domain and range and you have the points 0, 1, and 1e. 1 
or 0, 1, and 1, 1 over e. For number 2, state whether the following represent growth or decay. Use a calculator to complete the table and graph. When we're simplifying with e, we leave things in terms of e. But for this table for graphing, I'm going to get decimal approximations. For part a, a is equal to 3, which is positive, and r, the coefficient of x, is 1, which is also positive. So part a represents exponential growth. Plug these into a calculator. Graph your points. As a reminder, this will still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So if you graphed like this, your graph would be incorrect because it cannot cross or go below y equals 0. For part b, a equals 1 and r equals negative 0.5. So r is negative, which means we have exponential decay here. Now plug these into a calculator and then graph your exponential function. Remember to make sure that you put parentheses around the negative 0.5 and the x so the calculator knows e is to the power of the entire product. And again, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So here are your natural base exponential functions. So what was that Bernoulli guy talking about? If you continuously compounded the interest, instead of getting it compounded annually, or semi-annually, or quarterly, or monthly, or weekly, or daily, this is continuously compounded interest. If we take the formula for compounded interest and we evaluate it as the number of times per year compounded approaches infinity, we get a new formula. A equals PE to the RT. Per P is the initial principal, R is the annual interest rate, and T is the number of years the money is in the account. E is obviously the natural number, 2.718, and so on. You and your friend Sally each have accounts that earn annual interest compounded continuously. The balance A in dollars of your account after T years can be modeled by A equals 4,500 E to the 0.04 T. The graph at right shows the balance of your friend's account over time. Which account has greater principal? The initial value put into the account. The principal or starting amount in your account is $4,500. The starting amount or principal in your friend's account is $4,000. So your account has the greater principal. Who has a greater balance after 10 years if the money is untouched? For your account, plug in T equals 10 into the equation. And that would be $6,713.21. To find the amount in Sally's account at t equals 10, let's look at the y value at t equals 10 years on the graph. Sally has over $7,000 in her account after 10 years. So Sally has more money after 10 years. And there's your introduction to the natural number e.